All right, everybody. Looks like we're just about ready to go. Thank you for those of you who are jumped on right on time. Let's see if we can get this going here. All righty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. Glad to see you all starting to pop in here. Welcome. And we'll get started here in just a second. As soon as I get all my various chat windows open and ready to go. King Abdullah, hello, 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 everybody. I'm seeing you all come in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. And let's make sure we get this one going too. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Peep, or Pepe. Dorian, Ryan Mon Monroe, Martin, Tashur, and Mike, and Ian, and Mahesh. Welcome, everybody. And Trent Willis is on the, on the other chat as well. Glad to see all of you popping in here. And I think I got just about every window open that I need open for this. All right, Stevie Reed, what's going on, man? Charles, hello, hello, Eddie. Wow, a bunch of people coming in on a late Friday afternoon, at least my time. Uh, well, welcome, and hello, New York. Why isn't that chat window working? Let's try this again. Got one more window to get going here, and then we can start a program. You guys ready to do some uh, graphic design layouts? On... Uh, on your mobile devices. Good evening, Ryan, James. Hello, everyone. Great to see so many of you here. All right, for whatever reason, I'm not getting comments on that side, but all right, we gotta go. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Let me tell you a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go out on a limb and assume that everyone here, oh, now the comments are coming up. Everyone here, everyone in the chat has a mobile device of some kind. You probably have a smartphone, uh, whether it's iOS or Android or something else. Um, and, and many of you also have tablets. And if you don't have a smartphone or don't have a tablet, I'm either gonna show you a way to do this on the web. So that should cover just about everybody on this beautiful Friday afternoon, uh, or Friday morning, or Saturday evening, or Saturday morning, depending on where you are in the world, whatever time it is. All right, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump in without further ado. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over uh, so you guys can see what I'm doing here on my tablet and see the application we're gonna go ahead and start with first. Now, since a lot of people come in as it's going, there are always people that, um, Question, can you turn off, off the GPS completely? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you can certainly disable it in your privacy settings so that it's no longer being used, but I don't know about physically turning off the hardware. As far as I know, you can't uh, without some kind of uh, hack or break. But anyway, back to where we are. So, so since, since many of you will be coming in uh, as this goes on, and I don't have to keep answering this question over and over and over again, the first app we're going to start off with is a big icon in the upper left-hand corner. It's called Adobe Spark. Adobe Spark for iOS and web. So if you don't have an iOS device, you can still do this on the web. Um, now, for people that do have an iOS device, it's much, much better to do it on the device than it is on the web. But if you don't have an iOS device, you can absolutely do it on the web as well. Uh, now, with that said, Spark um, is free. So there's no cost to use Spark. You can go to your app store, download Adobe Spark, no charge, no in-app purchases. It is free to use. So you don't have to pay anything to do this. So let's get started with Spark first. I'm gonna use this on an iPad Pro that I've got going here, and I'm just gonna, you should be able to see the iPad Pro in the upper right-hand corner. And with the iPad Pro, I'm gonna go into my Adobe folder, 
And in my Adobe folder, I've got the two apps we're going to be using. We're going to start off with Adobe Spark Post. There are three Spark apps. All three are free. Spark Page for designing beautiful web stories. Spark Post for designing uh, graphic design layouts and social media posts. And Spark Video for telling your story with uh, video and text and imagery uh, and your voice. So you can do it with um, Spark Page, which can also incorporate videos, but it's more driven to be a web designed page for your story. And of course, Spark Video being more of a video at the end of, at the, end of the process. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and tap on the one in the middle, which is um, Adobe Spark Post. Now Spark Post, free app. Uh, as you can see, the minute I come, come into it, it's almost overwhelming now with the amount of templates that they have. Now I've shown, I've streamed Spark Post before. So you're saying, well, Terry, why are you streaming this again? Because there's so much that has changed since the last time I've done it. It's gotten leaps and bounds better than it was before. Um, so with that said, you have categories at the top. So if you know you want to do something for school related or business related or travel related, you can jump right to that category. And then there are feature designs in the middle here. And what's new is you'll see a lot of designs now, especially the ones that are featured, that will have multiple images. And that's where we're getting into today for the, um, uh, for the uh, graphic design layouts. So for example, let me go back up. And let me choose travel. I want to do one that's travel based. Now, you don't have to use one of these. You can start from scratch. If we go back, the plus sign at the very bottom, the green plus sign, meaning, hey, I don't even want to start with a template. I'm going to design the whole thing from scratch. Or I can say, eh, I kind of want some inspiration, some ideas. Uh, let me go ahead and just peruse the ones that are travel related and see which ones I like. All right, so I kind of like, I kind of like a couple of these, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick one. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. Keep calm and climb on, bottom right-hand corner. So when I tap on it, it gives me a bigger view of it. If I don't like it, I can just tap the X and close and get back to the gallery, and then pick the one that I, pick another one. But I do want this one, and you notice at the very bottom, there's a remix button. So when I tap remix, that's now saying, okay, here you go. You can do whatever you want to this. Change the photo, change the text, change the colors, change any aspect of this you want to make it your own. You don't have to use any of this. Uh, so people will often ask, well, hey, I kind of like that picture. Can I use it? Yes. Any of the templates that have pictures in them already, those uh, pictures are royalty free for you to use. They're free, free public domain pictures to use. But of course, many people are going to want to use their own. So for example, I can tap on the image and at the very top, there's a trash can to get rid of it on the right. And on the left is a, like a picture icon, meaning I want to go get my own picture. I don't want to use this one. You can use uh, one of the newer things, one of the newer features is that you can use a solid color. So let's say you just want to have text on top of a color. You don't want to use an image. Now that's a feature. You can actually pick just a you know, brown, blue, black, green, whatever color you want, and that will be the color. Then all the options below that are to get an image. So if you want to grab an image right off your device, um, just hit photo library and that'll bring up your camera roll, your albums, whatever you have on your device, and you can grab images from there. Uh, of course, you can use the camera that's built in. So if you're right, some, right in the middle of something, you want to take a picture right then and there and then create a post based on it, you can. Um, and thanks, um, Robert, for putting in the URL. For those of you who are not seeing that URL, it's spark.adobe.com, which we're going to get to that in a minute. All right, next, search for free photos, which again, like the rock climber here or mountain climber, that's a free photo. I love being able to pull in my Lightroom mobile photos. That's what I'll be doing today. And of course, if you have something in Creative Cloud, um, in the Creative Cloud folder, or I believe Creative Cloud libraries as well, you can pull those in. But I'm going to go ahead and jump right to Lightroom. That will show me my Lightroom collections. I'm going to go to one of my collections called a World Traveler. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick, um, we'll start off with, let's say, Statue of Liberty. All right, so when I grab that image, and I notice that there's one thing that pulling from Lightroom 
doesn't give you the ability of doing that pulling from your, let's say your camera roll does. So here's your first tip. When you're pulling from your camera roll, you can actually pull in multiple pictures at the same time. I can still pull in multiple pictures here. I just have to do them one by one if I'm going to do them from Lightroom. Um, so I can move this around. So of course we don't want to cut off the torch, but we don't want to cover our face either, but I'm not done yet. So let's go ahead and tap the add button, which is brand new. Prior to this update, when you use post, you could only do one image, one color, that was it, uh, one image or one color. You, you couldn't combine multiple images together. Now I can. So I can say add more text or add another photo. So I can go right back to the same sources or different sources and grab a different photo if I want. And let's go ahead, um, I saw a nice image I have of the Statue of Liberty. Or we got that, I mean the uh, Eiffel Tower. Let's go ahead and grab that one. And you see what it did. It just kind of combined them, not very intelligently so far, <laughs> on top of the other in a really bad way. We're gonna fix that in a minute. We're gonna finish adding pictures first. Let's go ahead and get one more. Uh, add another free, or add another photo from my Lightroom collection, uh, World Traveler, and let's go ahead and get, oh, I don't know. Let's see, we did Europe, we did, US, uh, I'm going to Iceland in July, so let's go ahead and pull in another Iceland photo. Let's go, going back to Iceland, I should say. All right, so we got this in. All right, and as you can see, it's starting to just try to lay out the photos one by one. Um, now, if I don't like that design, the design button has become super powerful. If I tap on design, I get to pick a different design that might fit my images better. So for example, I can peruse through the designs here and I can say, oh, I don't know, um, maybe that's a better one. And then it will tap and make it a better one. Of course, I can slide the images up and down in, in, the, um, in the layout. Ooh, that one's probably gonna be the best one so far. So again, I can start with that design and I can continue to adjust things like the layout. So for example, here are just custom layouts without switching the design. So if I say, hey, I kind of like this one, or yeah, I kind of like that one actually, <laughs> or I like this one, or I like this one, I can kind of just keep, and even though I'm not using the same number of pictures as the grid, it's still giving me that capability now to use it. And if I want to add more pictures, then it will take on those extra spots. Or I can go back to that, or, uh, I don't know, it looks kind of basic. Let's go back to, that one's kind of cool. All right, so now that I got this one in place, next thing I wanna do, of course, is uh, we'll click done, and we'll start adjusting these. So of course, we wanna pull that back down. We wanna pull this one down, probably. And we wanna pull this one down. You know what? I'm thinking maybe I want, my, I want this image down in the lower left-hand corner. Do I have to start all over? Nope, press and drag, so press my finger on it and drag it down to that spot and then it flips it over. So it moved the color up there and of course the text is by itself. I can just pull the text back up. All right, so we got our text in place, we got our color in place and what I'm really not liking right now is I'm, I'm hating actually that filter that it put over my picture. I, it's destroying my picture, I don't like it at all. So I can go to photo and I can say, you know what, these filters are, are nice, but no, let's not put a filter on that photo or those photos at all. And of course, then I can get in. Um, actually, we don't wanna say that. What we wanna do is go to the palette. There we go. And you can even uh, switch colors in the palette or switch color palettes, I should say. And once you switch to a color palette that's more to your liking, let's go here, let's actually use that one. You can just keep tapping in that same color uh, palette to switch between the various color choices in that palette till you get to the one you like. So I can just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and maybe that's the one I wanna use. All right, something's going on with that one photo in the lower left-hand corner though. It's kinda like blown out a bit. I'm not sure why. Let's see here, we don't have a filter on it. Yep, no filter. Let's go back to that photo and let's replace it. So even though I put, or actually I don't wanna pull one in from the library. 
cancel. Even though I pulled a photo in from uh, Lightroom, I can, or anywhere for that matter, I can still replace it. Let's pick a different one. I'm not sure why that one's freaking out. Let's pick that one. Or I could pull that one back in and see if it corrected it. Okay, so that one came in correctly. Let's go back to it one more time. Let's pull the one in I really wanted to use and see if it comes in correctly this time. I think it was just a remnant of that filter. All right, let's try it again. Okay, now it's good. So it's just something wacky with that filter that was on it. All right, so now I got the pictures in that I want. I got the um, uh, location and design that I want. I can go back to the layout and I can still do more things. I don't want to change the layout itself, but I can also do a resize. We didn't really pick what this was going to be for. This to me is the most powerful use of Adobe Spark Post. Not only being able to pick custom designs and sizes that you may need for whatever you're going to use this for, but being able to change it without having to start all over again. So for example, if I scroll all the way over, notice that there are choices for all the most modern um, day, most used uh, social media sites. So there's the original Square Instagram, there's Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, for those of you who are still using Pinterest, blog post, <laughs> YouTube thumbnail, Facebook ad, Instagram story, which is brand new, um, Facebook profile cover, page cover, event, Twitter header, so forth and so on, and then just regular sizes. So if I were gonna use this on a video, for example, then I might wanna choose 16 by nine and, and to use it in a video. But let's say we're gonna switch it over to, um, I can go to an Instagram square, and it just kinda relays it out that way. I can go to an Instagram story, and it relays it out that way. See how much faster this is than doing it by hand. So I might design it once and repurpose it for all the different places that I'm going to post it. Um, for example, we can go to a um, Facebook event cover. Now, it's going to mean moving the images around a bit, but as you can see, it did start laying it out horizontally. So again, I can pick that image, just pull it down, pick this image, pull it down where I want it, pick this image and pull it down where I want it. And of course, vertical images in this layout may not be the best choice. So I can go back to, let's say, an Instagram story, and now that is ready to go. Okay, so once I'm done, uh, if I am done, I can share this and share it directly to social media or save it to my camera roll as an image ready to go. And even if I don't save it yet, if I go back to my post, it will save everything I've done and put it into my post area. We didn't do the text though. Let's go to our text because keep calm and climb on doesn't make a lot of sense for this. I'm going to say keep calm and let's try travel on. All right. Or not on really doesn't make sense. Let's go. Let's keep, keep calm and travel. All right. We'll do that. Now, here's some cool things about laying out the text. Uh, what's up? And Glory76 says awesome. I think it's awesome too. Notice how I can just resize this frame and it relays out the text as well. So if I want to make the text bigger, just make the frame bigger. But what if I don't like the design? Notice the minute I tap on the text, I get all my font choices at the bottom. Now these are fonts that are built in, so I don't have to have necessarily anything loaded extra on my iPad or iPhone. Um, these are all built in and ready to go. So if I want to try my own hand at picking a different font, I can and it will keep to the layout and keep doing its thing. Um, now, if I feel like, oh no, I'm not really good at this, I can say done. And my favorite thing about this is I can go in and choose, let me think of where it is now. I can choose, I wanna get to my design wheel. Oh, style, there we go. I can go to the style wheel. <laughs> if I tap on style, Notice there's a little wheel. I love this wheel. This is the I can't make up my mind wheel. Because when I choose this wheel, watch what happens. I just turn it with my finger and keep turning it till I get what I want. And it will just keep giving me different choices uh, based on the color theme, based on the photos, based on the different fonts that are installed, based on the way it's typed. Ooh, I kind of like that one. So if I like that one, I would then just tap done and I can still alter it. I can still change the color, still do whatever I want, but that would give me a good starting point. Or I can just keep turning until I find something I like better. There we go. Oh, went too far. Go back. There, I like it in white better. 
So now I hit done and I've designed that the way I want. All right, so instead of let's go climbing.com, we up, oh, let's get out of this. Got that text, got this text. Let's say let's go or let's go to tra let's go traveling.com. If that's a site, which it probably is. Can't vouch for it. I just made it up. Let's go ahead and say done. And again, we can pick this up. And move that around. We get um, smart guides to kind of tell us where if it's lined up or not. And there it is in the center. And the same thing, I can redesign that just by turning the style wheel until I get that to look the way I want, which actually the way it was was pretty good. And away we go. Now you still have opacity. You still have uh, all kinds of effects in 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 addition to adding more text and more images. Um, so one more thing before we move off this. Uh, let me move the Eiffel Tower over a bit. I want to show you, let's go back to layout one more time. We did layouts, we did resize, we did not do spacing. Spacing is also new. So with spacing, I can choose an overall border for my uh, design, which is kind of cool. Just keeps it all, all, all um, uniform and, and contained. Or... I can choose cell borders. So if I drag the cell slider over, look at what it does there. It kind of divides it up. And what if I don't like that color in between? Then I can just go to color. <laughs> and the thing I love about Spark uh, apps is they're always suggesting things so that you don't kind of break design rules. In other words, see the suggested colors? It's saying these colors would probably work better for what you have. You're free to go pick whatever you want. You're free to do this. People will hate you for it. So you should probably stick to one of these that will actually look better. Uh, so don't go picking something crazy just because you can, unless that's what you really want. Um, you stick to the design suggestions and you're probably gonna be much, much better. All right, now we've got that done. And if I hit, again hit share, it's gonna bring up all my choices. Um, share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter, share it to Instagram, um, put it in a message, just simply save it, copy a link to it or email it to someone. And of course, saving it means it's on my, oops, sorry about that. Oh no, hang on guys, let me pop my password in real quick. Can't let you see me type that. My computer uh, didn't think I was doing anything because I'm not actually doing something on the computer, so it went to sleep. All right, uh, or the display went to sleep. All right, so we're back. Let's go back. Come on, switch over. There we go, we're back. And um, as I was saying, saving it to the camera roll or saving the image to your device means then you can do whatever you want with it, it's an image. So if I save the image, it's been saved to my camera roll and again, I can continue to share it. All right, let's go back. Those are the posts I've done so far. And of course, I can get to the templates and continue to design more. Now, the other cool thing about Spark is everything is synced via your Creative Cloud or your, I'm sorry, your Adobe ID. So if you're, if you have, you have the Adobe ID, you sign in to use the app. And then not only do you get the ability to use um, that design where you first created it, if I now bring up Spark post on my iPad, that design will be there in my layouts, in my um, post. Um, so also, if I go now to the web, and here, we'll, I'm on, this is the site I was telling you about, or I was gonna tell you about, spark.adobe.com. So if you don't have an iOS device, then you can use this on, um, on the web and get right to Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video. So here I am on Spark, uh, Adobe Spark on the page, and if I go to my projects, all things considered, that should have synced um, my latest project, which there it is right there, untitled, and I can edit it here. So if I edit it here, um, now whatever changes I make, I'm now making them while I'm in my web browser. So if I wanna, again, pick this up and decide to move this down a bit, change what it says, swap out pictures, move them around, do any of, use the design, uh, style wheel, do any of the things that I did before, I can on the web. So whether I started this on the web, 
or started it on mobile or started it and finished it on either one, I have access to everything I've done in Spark no matter what device I pick up. So if I pick up my iPad, they're there. Pick up my iPhone, they're there. To go to the web browser, they're there to continue working. And of course, if you go back out to Spark, you can create a new project just like you did on the app. So I can create a, a post, a page, or a video right here on the web and keep working. All right, uh, author, hello in NYC. Off topic, but how are you? Um, how are you able to not show background? I'm on a green screen, if that's what you're referring to, um, Anil. All right, so with that said, now let's jump out back to the iPad. And uh, we're gonna switch gears here and we're gonna switch over to a different app. So Spark, we're, before I leave it, Adobe Spark Post is what you just saw. Spark Post is a free iOS app and free service on the web at spark.adobe.com. Switching gears. Now we're going to a different app. This app is Adobe Comp CC, and it is on both iOS and Android. So if you have an Android device and you're saying, oh man, I don't get to use Spark, well you do get to use Comp. So let's pop out, go back to my folder here, and Comp CC, available on iOS and Android, again, another free app. What's the difference? Spark was made from the ground up for non-designers, for people that don't know how to lay things out from scratch or who don't want to lay things out from scratch, even if they know how. Quickly get in, design something, use the style wheel, bring in your own pictures, have things laid out for you automatically, and then boom, you're, you're off to the races. Comp CC, on the other hand, think of it as InDesign for your mobile device. So you're starting with a blank page. You're starting with a layout that you create from scratch. So just to give you a quick kind of what's the difference between them, let's go ahead and um, pop open comp where I've got some comps I've already made. And in the lower right hand corner of comp is the purple plus sign <laughs> instead of the green one that lets me create a new comp from scratch. So when I tap on new comp, I'm not presented with beautifully styled designs. I'm presented with, hey, what size do you want this to be? What size is your blank page going to be? And you create your blank page and away you go. So there are some uh, formats I use regularly at the top. They're divided by categories or so devices, print, web, social, my formats. And so, so it's got a lot of the same social ones. It doesn't get updated quite as frequently as Spark does. So for example, it doesn't have Instagram story, but if you knew the size, you can just tap new format, type in the size of an Instagram story and save it and then it's yours to use from that point on. So for example, before we had, um, before we, uh, when it first came out, it didn't have square. And so I went and made, Let's see, my formats. Yeah, I went and made one called Instagram that was 1080 by 1080. And so now that's there for me to use. Um, but let's say I wanna use one that is that is here already. Let's say I wanna do a, we'll just do a standard letter size document, just to keep it simple. All right, so there's my letter size document. Where's all those beautiful designs? They're over in Spark. Here's your beautiful design. This is saying, you're the expert. Let me get out of your way. Do whatever you want. So how do I start laying things out in Comp CC if I do know what I want? Um, you start with this. This is your tool to use. Now you can either draw your placeholders with your finger or in the upper right hand corner you can choose what you want. So if I know I want text, tap the T. If I know I want an image, tap the image and bring it in. Your choice. I kind of like the free form way of doing it. Uh, just because that's the way comp originally, originally came out. Uh, but feel free, if you don't feel like drawing frames, you can just go ahead and pick the icons at the top right. So for example, let's say I want an image. How do I make an image frame? Like that. There's my image frame. Let's say I want another image frame, smaller one. Well then just don't make it as big. <laughs> let's say that I want to erase that. Scribble over it, erase it. 
Let's say I want three to be the exact same size. Draw them quickly. It will assume you want all of them the same size and aligned perfectly. Let's say you want some text in between that. Draw a line and put a dot after it. Let's say you want some paragraph text. Draw three lines and put a dot after it. Let's say you now want to pick this stuff up and move it around. Tap on it, pick it up, and move it around. Size it, get it wherever you want it to be. Pick that up, put that where you want it to be. Make that bigger if you want. Make that frame bigger if you want. And you can't, I'm holding my tablet so I can't do the tip to select all three of these at the same time, but you can select all three of them at the same time and move them as one. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, but it does have smart guides, so once I move it, they will be lined up as well. I can also align and distribute the space between them, uh, but we'll do it like that. And then I've got this that I can now pick up and put this wherever I want and make that text bigger or smaller just by dragging the thing on the side there. So if I know I'm going to put a lot of body copy, away we go. So that's comp. That's saying... You're in control. You know exactly what kind of layout you want, and you're not limited by the templates because there are no templates. You're designing the, from a blank page, any size page you want, any way you want. So now that I've kind of got the layout looking the way I want, what do I do now? Well, let's, for example, I want to get rid of one of these boxes in the middle for a second. And I do want to draw an ellipse with an X in it because then that will give me a circular placeholder instead of a square. And uh, now that I got that in place, ooh, let me make sure I got it in the center. Good, got it centered. Now I can start going ahead and laying things out. Now, uh, before I start laying things out, you're saying, well, Terry, how did you know that's how you make a um, resize an image in Spark? Yes, you can, Barry. Uh, how did you know to draw the circle with the X in it? How did you know to draw the three lines on a dot? How do you learn this if I just go download this right now? In the upper right hand corner, that little gear icon, if you tap it, there is a thing at the very bottom that says drawing gesture help. My favorite thing. Because that shows you everything you can do. One page comes up, shows you how to do all the things that it can do with your finger. So I'll let you soak that in for a second while I look at your questions. Uh, yes, Stevie, for people like you. <laughs> um, And Elizabeth, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying Spark. Hey, Simon, how's it going? And just kind of glancing at your comments there. All right. So uh, once, you're, once you've learned it, you can close it, and away you go. So now let's say I want to start bringing things in. Same concept. I tap on that frame. Now instead of, um, remember I told you at the top right, that's where you bring things in. At the very bottom, this is where you use the icons to adjust the things you've already brought in. So I've already created the frame. I just want to put an image in it. So I tap the image in the lower left-hand corner. Looks very familiar to, to Spark. Where do you want to get this image from? On your device? You want to take a new picture right now? You want to grab it from Creative Cloud? You want to get it from the market? Or you want to grab it from Adobe Stock? Uh, or you want to use your CC libraries? I want to use um, my files on Creative Cloud. And I want to go ahead and tap um, my photos there. And we can use some of the same ones we saw a second ago. Um, I think I saw a nice backdrop there that wouldn't be nice. So it's looking at my um, Lightroom Mobile in this case. And I want to use that one I saw earlier. If I can find it. It's got to be down here. There it is. Let's use that one we used earlier. And what it will do is show it to me. And then I can say, yes, that's the one I want. Open it and it automatically, proportionally fills the image. Um, yep, both of these apps are free, Anna. Completely free. All right, so now, of course, I can tap. And if I tap and move the frame, I can move the frame. If I double tap, then I can move the image in the frame. So I can kind of get that where I want it where in the frame. All right, now, someone uh, mentioned earlier in the chat, hey, can I resize? Yes, you can, just grab the corner and now you're resizing the image and uh, you're reflowing the image as well. So if you do it that way, it intelligently sizes it so that it's now, even though that's not a tall image, it makes it tall down your page. And of course, I can resize it and just pull it down a little bit more. 
All right, next thing I want to do is let's say that I, hey, I, and now that I'm looking at this, I kind of want that text to be on top. Let's put the text in that we want, um, and then we'll go ahead and um, change the attributes of it. So let's go to the text, double tap, and that's going to bring up the keyboard. And yes, you can, I, I'm holding this, but yes, you can use uh, your Bluetooth or your iPad keyboard and type directly. Uh, since I'm holding it, my iPad keyboard's down here, not even attached. I've got a smart cover with a keyboard on it, but I'm not going to use it right now because I'm holding my iPad. I don't have a place to sit it down. All right, so let's go ahead and say, uh, join me, join me in Iceland. All right, so now I've got that in place, or I'm done actually, so I can put the keyboard away. And of course, now I kind of want it to look different. I just don't want the default type. So while that's selected, I've got the ability to tap on the T at the bottom and I get a bunch of choices. First of all, I can center it. Oops, sorry, center it. And then I can go in and this is the coolest thing about comp. To my knowledge, it is the first and still only app, period, that lets you bring in your own fonts, in this case from Typekit. Most apps, all apps that I know of, only have the fonts available in them, like whatever, like Spark. It has that list of fonts, but that's it. If you don't find a font in there you like, oh well. And all apps are like that except Comp. If I go to Font, I can see all, these aren't just random fonts, these are all the fonts I use on the desktop. Uh, so yesterday I did a stream, I'm trying to remember, yeah, there it is, that P22, I can't see the name of it, uh, Xanner. That was a script font I did in my demo yesterday that I synced to my desktop. And here it is in comp available for me to use. So if I want to use that script, I could. I don't want to use that script, but I could. Uh, I want to go ahead and get something bigger and bolder. Uh, let's go ahead. Fat Frank's kind of fun, but we're going to use Azo Uber Sans. All right, so now I just tap the yes, I want to use that. And there it is. It's got that uh, font in place. All right, so now let's go back out. Let's go back out to text. And the next thing I want is instead of the font, I want to actually change the color. So you notice there's a black swatch at the bottom. And of course, I can use the color wheel and say that I want the text to be white or any color in between um, and get the color that I want. But what's cooler is I can also use my libraries. So I can use my library to get any color swatches that I'm designing with on the desk top desktop. All right, so uh, I'm going to go just right back to the regular uh, color picker because all I want for this is white. But if I did have a custom color that I wanted to use, I could use it. Now, of course, I can still um, make it bigger, as clients always say. There it is. Make it bigger. And why don't we, just for the sake of, because we can, let's lower the opacity of that just ever so slightly. There we go. All right, so you kind of get the idea of how comp works. Um, it's more from this point on, rinse and repeat. If I want to add another graphic, tap on that one, go find the graphic I want to add, it comes into that square. Um, you might be wondering, well, how does that work with a circle? Uh, let's see if I got one quicker on my device here. Uh, let's go in. Let's find, I will use this one. All right, we'll just grab that one in. And it does what you think. It, crops it to a circle. All right, and of course, uh, the text is the text. I can just tap and type in whatever text I want to be down there. If I want my text bigger or smaller, all I have to do is click on the frame and drag up or down uh, to make the size bigger, or I can put in a specific point size. If I knew I wanted that to be a specific point size, then I can just go to type and tap that point size that I want it to be. I also have the ability to choose line and letter spacing. So I can say, make the letter spacing tighter on that, or I'm sorry, line spacing tighter on that. And we'll also make it bigger. So that's what people want, they want it bigger. Now, what if I wanted to join me and I join me in to be smaller? That, I would need to separate it. I would need to make a different frame for the join me in, then I can make that smaller, which would actually look a lot better. Why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and select that. Let's go ahead and cut that out. Let's go ahead and make another uh, text thingy there. And let's then go ahead and paste that in. All right, so now we got our join me in. 
And now we can tap on it and we can do the same things. Let's go ahead and make it white. And let's make it um, centered. And let's choose a different style font for it. I want to use something thin in this case. Uh, we'll use Proxima Nova Regular. There we go. And then, of course, we can make that bigger. Center it and move that up. And there we go. So I can keep making that bigger if I want, but I think that kind of gets the point across. Actually, I probably wouldn't want it centered. Maybe I want that. Don't know, but you get the idea. This is literally about doing what you want from every aspect. Okay, let's say, because we can play with this all afternoon. We're, we're out of time. Let's say you're done. What do you want to do now? It's an eight and a half by 11. So that means, yeah, I can print it. I can print it directly from comp. But what if I want to now do something else? I can send it to my desktop and op have it open as an editable file in InDesign, Photoshop, or Illustrator. Your choice, or Muse for that matter. If you're mocking up a, lay or a website with your client, you're doing all the things we just did, and now you want to turn that into a Muse file and continue building the website out, you can. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to InDesign. That will build, it's building on my iPad an InDesign compatible file, and once it builds it, it will then sync it uh, over the internet, and there it is, sent. So in a few seconds, it should sync it down and open up, and I'm not touching my computer, by the way, here are my hands. Uh, it should sync that down and open that up on the computer. All right, so while it's doing that, let me go over the other share, oh, here it comes. <laughs> I didn't get time, there it is. So it opened that up, and I happen to have InDesign open for the sign of what this app is. Um, but there it is, an InDesign document completely, I'll bring up the tabs here, completely ready to go. If I want to change that, move this around, do anything to it, this is a completely editable file with all the links and everything sent over ready to go for me to continue with, do anything I want to do with it. So that's sending it to the desktop in whatever application format you want, InDesign, Illustrator, InDesign, InDesign Illustrator, Photoshop, or Muse. All right, uh, so now that we got that in place, let me go back here and show you, again, continue to show you the share options. One more is fairly new, and that shares PDF or share PDF. So you can generate a PDF of this right on the fly without getting back to your computer and sending it to your client, saying, hey, this is what I'm thinking about so far. What do you think? And they can go from there and you can keep working on it. So this is the coolest thing ever for people that need to do layouts without being strapped to a laptop or desktop. And yes, it does even work on the phone. Screen's smaller, but you have all the same capabilities. So I can, I've done mock-ups of social media posts that I wanted to customize right there on the spot on my phone and shared it right out to the, to the um, or uh, saved, shared the image to my camera roll and posted it right to social media from my phone. And of course, now that we have um, Spark Post to do that with, that even gets a lot easier. So there you have it, folks. You pick. If you're on iOS, you got both choices. If you're on Android, you can use Spark on the web for free or you can use CompCC on your Android device for free. And if you're on iOS, you can use either one for free or the web for Spark for free. Um, and you have it. All right, so let me make sure I didn't miss any last minute questions here. And let me put this down for a second. Oh. Could we open that photo? Can we open it on other photo apps that are Photoshop? Well, you can certainly share the image to your camera roll, and then you can open it up in any app that opens up images. It'll make a JPEG or a ping out of it. I can't remember which. Um, can this be used on the PC desktop? You can use Spark on the PC desktop in a browser. Uh, you can't use comp on the C on the desktop because we already have desktop apps. We already have InDesign um, and Illustrator and Photoshop, which would do the same things and more. So that's why. Um, very cool to be able to use fonts. 
Yes, the way you want. Thanks, Anique, for being here. So cool to see you in the chat. All right. Let's see if I'm missing anybody else. I make it look easy, Ginger, because it is easy. I'm not doing anything that you can't do. I showed you step by step how to do it. it I'm doing it, showing you easy stuff because it's easy to do. All right, let me see if I missed anything over here. Oh, you missed the whole live stream. Well, as soon as I stop it, you'll be able to go back and watch the replay. All right, let me see if I make sure I'm not missing any of your important questions before I call it a day. And you're welcome, our Bojol Jr. <laughs> okay, great. B Swan. And uh, WoW is right. It is WoW stuff. You have an Air 2 also going to the App Store now to download. Awesome. Uh, yep, you'll be able to use it on your Air. Either one, as a matter of fact. So cool, glad you guys like it. Yes, you will be able to watch the replay as soon as I stop the stream, which will be in about 10 seconds. So with that said, hey guys, I wanna uh, thank you for coming in, watching the stream. Have a great weekend. We'll be back next week. When I say we, meaning the evangelist streaming, um, we stream on both Facebook and YouTube regularly throughout the week. Uh, so I'll be back next week to show you more cool things. So follow the Adobe channels, follow the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel, follow the various product Facebook pages like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Spark, um, Premiere, After Effects. They all have Facebook pages and we stream to those pages on a regular basis. So with that said, thanks everybody. Cheers. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye everybody. Uh -huh.